This lesson is about using exponents to denote powers of 10 with application to metric problems. What that means is that we are looking at exponents and mixing that with metric conversions. The reason that works is because metric conversions work in with base 10. So you've used the place value chart before, and we're going to continue using that, but it's going to be modified a little bit for the metric system. And this is how we've modified it a little bit. We have a saying, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. That's to help us remember the different units with kilo, hecto, deca, your base, which I'll explain in a minute, deci, centi, and milli. Okay? So what we do with this is we take our base, whether it's meters, liters, or grams, as an example, and then we can add a prefix which tells us where we are. So if we have kilo liters, we have a thousand liters, or kilograms, we have a thousand grams. Okay, we can also use something like meter, where you have decameter to mean 10 grams, uh, excuse me, 10 meters, or centimeter to mean one one hundredth of a meter. We can see that a little bit more clearly if we line up or closely line up our place value chart with our chart of King Henry because King Henry goes to kilo, which goes to thousands, okay? And you can see how it is all linked together here. So if you use your place value chart, you should be able to use those conversions with the different names. Now it's also important to look at the bottom, where it talks about largest to smallest, multiplying, and smallest to largest. That can be a little bit confusing at first, but let's take it a little bit deeper. What I have here is a block or you could look at it like a cake. And what you want to do is see how many pieces are in this cake if I cut it evenly. Okay? Another way that you could look at this is this is kilograms, and I want to see how many grams are in it. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to need to multiply to see how many smaller pieces are in it. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this larger unit type and breaking it down into this smaller type. And when I go from larger to smaller, I need to make sure that I multiply because I'm adding pieces. I'm going to have a greater number of small pieces to make one larger, okay? Or one larger unit has multiple smaller units inside of it. Now, if I'm going from a small unit, maybe I'm going from millimeters to meters, in this direction, I'm going to divide. And I'm going to do that because I'm going from multiple pieces into one. Okay? The way that I think about it is I have a cake that I'm splitting and dividing among my friends, or I'm putting something together, I have all these pieces, and I need to put it into one box. And I put together this conversion chart in order to help you as you're walking through these. Now, it would be great if you can get these to memory, but for right now, I'm more concerned about you working through them so that you understand what you're doing. Okay? On the left side here, I have metric conversions, which are common. On the right side, I have customary conversions, and that's what we use here in the United States. Okay? When you're using um, changing the units of measurement, think about if you're going from a bigger unit which is on the left side, to a smaller unit, you're going to multiply. A small unit to a bigger unit is you're going to go this way. Okay? I used the word unit and base interchangeably because um, what we're doing, they are the same thing. So let's look at a sort of problem that we have. We're trying to convert meters into centimeters, and then we're going to convert that into millimeters. So I'm going to use my chart and see that one meter represented with M, is the same as 100 centimeters. So if I have 2 meters, it would make sense that I would have 200 centimeters. And the way that I did that is looking at my place value chart and seeing that I move two places. So what I'm really doing is 2 times 10 for the first place. Um, column times 10 for the second column, or 2 times 10 squared, or 2 to the second power. Okay, So now I know that I have 200 centimeters. Now I can go from meters to millimeters, or I can go from centimeters 
two millimeters. The challenge with this is if you made a mistake with centimeters, you're going to carry that mistake over to millimeters. So you can look at it either way, but you need to be careful. When I look at my conversion chart, I see that one meter is the same as 1,000 millimeters, noted with mm. So similarly to the problem above, what I really have is two times 10 to the third power, or 10 cubed, um, because I'm looking at my 1,000 here, which is 10 times 10 times 10. Another way that I could look at it is 2 times 1,000. So in which case I would see that 1, mil one meter is the same as 2,000 millimeters. And I used my chart the entire time to solve this problem. Okay, so now you're ready to try a problem on your own. Okay, this problem is a cat weighs four and five tenths of a kilogram, or four and a half kilograms. Convert its weight to grams. When I solve this problem, I write down that one kilogram is the same as 1,000 grams, okay, so that I have my point of reference where I'm starting with. And then I show my next step. I have four and a half kilograms times 10 cubed, or 10 to the power of three, or four and a half times 1,000, remembering that 10 to the third, 10 cubed, is the same as 1,000. And when I solve that, I see that I have 4,500 grams. Also note that I did label it because you will frequently get it marked as incorrect if you do not include a label. Try one more problem. A dog weighs 6,700 grams. Convert its weight into kilograms. First thing that I do when I solve this is I write down that 1,000 grams is the same as one kilogram. And I notice that I'm going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit or a larger unit, so I know that I need to divide. Now it's important to note that just because I have more grams does not mean that it is going from bigger to smaller. Okay? Having more of something does not change its size, it changes the quantity of what you have. Okay? So I have my grams. And I'm going from grams to kilograms, okay? So I have 6,700 grams dividing by 1,000 so that I can go into kilograms. And when I divide it, um, I see that I have 6 and 7 tenths of a kilogram, okay? And you notice, again, I put it in exponential form below. It can be 1,000 or 10 cubed. 